Hello and welcome to my review of the Sisters of Battle Penitent Engine. We don't yet know how much these will cost. I'm going to guess that one of these on its own will be £25. Maybe they're going to sell them as a pair for £35. That seems about the pricing that I would expect. If they do them in a set of two, that makes sense in terms of you can have one penitent engine and one mortifier which you can change to a anchorite i'm hoping that the set has enough for mortifiers and penitent engines although i'm not adverse to a set that either has penitent engines or mortifiers i'll tell you the difference between those in a moment but at present um the only way to get this penitent engine is through the sisters of battle army set that came out end of november which would cost you 125 pounds what we'll do is we'll have a close-up look at the model itself we'll do some size comparisons and then i'll go through all of the rules for this um so the model itself is lovely it's just this big hunk of metal of fire and flame and chainsaws and you know it's got this i think prisoner or slaver or i don't know whatever um it's got this human uh kind of strapped in um in straps uh with padlocks on um it's you know got things attached to it his spine uh, and I'm guessing that this thing, this person, is controlling the penitent engine. I mean, yeah, it, maybe this thing is keeping him alive to some extent, but it's centre of mass. Uh, I don't know what happens if you were to just shoot at this living uh, person at the front, whether that completely, uh, you know, disables the whole machine. Maybe if you get a lucky headshot. Yes, they move fast. Um, and it'd be quite lucky for you to, to do that. But at the same time, it's not armoured at all, that front area. And that is the thing that's controlling it, I would assume. So from an armour and sort of weakness point of view, it, it seems quite weak um, to have the thing that's controlling this, this massive vehicle, this walker, uh, being so vulnerable out there. A bit like being strapped on the front of a car on like Mad Max or something. Anyway, it's uh, bipedal, um, the the feet look all right. They look like they could sort of work. I don't know about the gyro stabilizers there. It's, it's clearly got an engine of some sort with the exhaust vents. Um, it's got the flamers, which have, you know, working fuel tanks. It's got the uh, ripsaw um, kind of chain blades on there. It's got a couple of uh, torches as well. Um, it's just horrific, in my opinion. Um, you know, you think some of the Sisters Repentia or even the Arco Flagellants uh, are horrific. This thing is, is like, extreme. Um, but I love it. I really do. Let's have a look at a uh, little bit of the detail there. So there you can see this prisoner, convict, whatever, um, non-believer uh, strapped in there. You can see all the spikes and the extra detail that they've that they put on this model. Um, it is smaller than I thought it would be. Uh, but then again, I've never had any experience of the older penitent engines. I'll put it in the comments below if uh, these are exactly the same size as the, the older ones. Um, okay, so that is the penitent engine. Let's just show you just kind of how small it is. Here's a normal battle sister on a 32 mil base. Um, you can see there that she is kind of knee height um, or hip height to the actual machine. She is similar height, bit taller than the person that's entombed or, you know, strapped on there uh, next to a sister's repentia which is similar height anyway so probably not not a, a decent um size comparison uh but yeah i mean it definitely sort of towers over these but it's not going to have as much present as presence as like an immolator or exorcist uh or triumph of saint catherine i wouldn't be an awesome youtube reviewer if i didn't show you other size comparisons with other imperial units so I will be showing you the Space Marines in a moment, hold on to your hat, um, but I thought I'd just show you uh, this penitent engine next to an old Dreadnought. Yes, it's on a square base as well. Yeah, I need to get that changed, but um, it's been, this is like over 20 years old, this model um, in my collection. It's metal and it weighs as heavy as a baking potato, um, probably heavier. But uh, yeah, it's, you know, the penitent engine, although it's 
smaller than I expected. It's still taller than a Dreadnought, obviously not as Im impressive and as awesome um, as, as the Dreadnought, uh, but still, um, you know, uh, just goes to show, uh, you know, the sizes in terms of a normal Dreadnought. Now, compared to a Redemptor Dreadnought, which can't even probably fit into the sh shot, uh, yeah, the Redemptor Dreadnought is the largest Dreadnought other than the Telemon. You know, it's larger than a, uh, a Leviathan um, Dreadnought. Uh, but compared to the Pennington engine, it, it makes the Pennington engine look, look tiny. These Redemptor Dreadnoughts are massive anyway. Um, you know, absolutely huge things. Uh, the only sort of original part of the Redemptor Dreadnought is just this front little sarcophagus, which, you know, is... I'd say exactly the same size as, as the normal Dreadnoughts um, sarcophagus part, but it just goes to show you just how big the, the Redemptor Dreadnought is um, and, you know, not how small the Penitent engine is compared to just normal normal Dreadnoughts. Let me show you in the Penitent engine compared to Space Marines then. So we've got, as always, uh, the normal Space Marine on the left um, and then Primaris on the right. There you go. So Primaris isn't, you know, it's, it does... It does tower over Primaris even, um, and you know the Primaris characters. It will it will be taller than them, way taller than normal um, Space Marines. So it's a little bit like um, Sisters of Battle uh, version of Dreadnoughts in a way. Okay, so that's all of the size comparisons out of the way. With I hope they have helped, and I hope that was a blast from the past um, in, in terms of the um, original Space Marine Metal Dreadnought. Let me go through all of the rules um, for this. Uh, Penitent engine. Firstly, you'll find it in the heavy support section of the codex. And one of the best things about the heavy support section is there's not an awful lot to choose from. So you can't really go wrong. It's not like you've got lots of choices in the Space Marine Codex and you could pick like a hunter or stalker and totally mess up your army list um, if the opponent doesn't bring flyers. I don't really think that uh, sisters have anything to counter flyers. Well, they certainly don't have a a flyer it'd be cool if they had some kind of winged fighter that would be awesome i'm giving games workshop ideas where are these flyers where are the flying transports <laughs> um anyway going back to the penitent engine heavy support uh choice you know you've got a choice there between the exorcist and um, which is the main heavy support choice in my opinion you've got the mortifiers or penitent engines or you've got the retributor squad uh so you've got four choices there. You know, the immolators and, and rhinos are, are transport. So the penitent engines are a power points cost of a three, which is coincidentally the same uh, power points cost as the mortifiers. And they're a points cost of 28. How do they compare points cost with the mortifier? Well, a mortifier is eight points more per model. And then you've got an anchorite, which is actually 42 points per model. Um, the Penitent Engine's stat line reads movement of 7 inches, weapon skill 4 plus, ballistic skill 5 plus, strength 5, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 4 attacks, leadership 8, and a save of 4 plus. How does that compare to a Mortify? Well, Mortify is faster. I don't know if it's bigger. I haven't really seen many size comparisons compared to the Penitent Engine, but of course, this channel will be bringing you that in due course. Um, so the Mortifiers are faster at 9 inches instead of 7 inches, and their weapon skill is better at 3 plus but everything else is the same. If you were to upgrade a Mortifier to an Anchorite, that bumps up their save to a 3+, plus, which is quite horrific if you think about it. The unit contains one Penitent Engine. It can additionally contain up to three Penitent Engines. Every model is equipped with two Heavy Flamers and two Penitent Flails. The Mortifiers, um, you can have more in that unit. You can have uh, six. You have one and then it can contain up to five more Mortifiers. Um, and one of them can be um, upgraded to a anchorite instead. Now, the way I remember it is that the mortifier uh, just has a way better ballistic skill at three plus, and um, has two heavy bolters and two penitent flails. So this is the thing: it's whether you want to pay the extra points for you know those heavy bolters, which are pretty decent. You know they're going to be pumping out six shots at 36 inch range. But the close combat weapons are the same, they're the penitent flails, and the penitent engines have the two flails, but they have two heavy flamers. So it's quite odd, in my opinion, that the mortifiers are faster, but they don't have the heavy flamers as standard. 
Um, you can change them to the heavy flamers, so maybe that would be a, a kind of better option. Um, to me, I wonder why there's like two types anyway, why there's mortifiers and penitent engines. Uh, because if you're getting mortifiers and you're equipping them with heavy flamers, then you might as well get penitent engines unless you want that extra um, speed. And they have different abilities as well, which, which I'll talk about in their review. So this penitent engine, like I say, you ha can have one, you can have up to three more uh, penitent engines. Um, so you can have four, I suppose. Um, they're equipped with the heavy flamers, which haven't changed. They're still range eight inches, so quite close range. Heavy D6, strength five, AP minus one, and a damage of one. I forgot to say that about the mortifiers, they have a better weapon skill at three plus, so even more of a reason to get them into close combat. Now they've got the penitent flails, which is a strength plus one, so it's strength six, AP minus two, and damage of one. Uh, you also make three hit rolls for each attack made, so that's 12 hit rolls um, instead of one. If the bearer is equipped with two of this weapon, then when the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack using this profile. Um, all right, that's that's interesting, but you just get one extra attack. Um, but of course, that one extra attack is three more hit rolls. So you've got 15 hit rolls, which is pretty good at strength six, AP minus two. Of course, any model can be equipped with one penitent buzz blade instead of one penitent flail, or any model can be equipped with two penitent buzz blades instead of two penitent flails. So you've got an option there of having a flail or a buzz blade or both flails or both buzz blades. So the buzz blade is a strength plus three. So now you, you've got a strength eight weapon on your hands, AP minus three and a damage of two. If the bearer is equipped with two of this weapon, then when the bearer fights, it makes one additional attack using this profile. Okay, so that, that's where you, you're taking the hit. Instead of getting 15 hit rolls, you're now only getting five, but they are strength eight, AP minus three um, attacks and they are damage two as well. So that's the, your trade-off. You get five much stronger attacks or you just get loads and loads of attacks with the penitent flails. Um, it's great that you're getting make hit, three hit rolls for each attack made rather than like D3. It just goes all out in terms of attacks with those flails. Unfortunately, or fortunately, this has got the penitent buzz blades. Um, so the you know much stronger attacks there, but I'm definitely going to equip um, my next penitent engines with the flails as well. Abilities, Zealot, and then Berserk Killing Machines. When a model in this unit would lose a wound, roll 1d6. On a 5+, plus, that wound is not lost. So that's brilliant, so kind of like a 5+, plus, feel no pain. Keywords, Imperium, Adeptus Ministorum, Vehicle, Penitent Engines. So there you go. They're the rules for the Penitent Engine. I wish it had a movement speed of 9 inches. I really do. I can't honestly see why the mortifiers have that extra two inches. If it had movement speed of nine inches, it would be an auto include. It's quite decent in, in terms of it's got a good toughness, um, uh, an all right number of wounds. It's got a fair decent number of attacks that are quite strong anyway, minimum strength of six there. Um, the save is a bit weak at four plus. Um, they don't have an invulnerable save. And yeah, they are lacking in speed in terms of seven inches. You know, they're only one inch faster than um, something on foot, which for a vehicle that size, uh, you know, I think it's the same size as the mortifiers. I would have expected at least a nine inch mo uh, movement speed. Um, so it's a bit let down in the old movement speed. And as always, a bit of weight of fire um, can knock it down. Also, it's lacking in in, uh, in its weapon skill too. So not an auto include in my opinion. Um, you know, if you have two of them charging at the enemy, that would be pretty good if you can get them in range fast enough. But like I say, the movement seven inches really does uh, let it down. And that's why, in my opinion, you're better off taking the mortifiers. They're a little bit more um, expensive in terms of points cost, but the same power points cost, but you're getting better weapon skill, better ballistic skill, and you've got the option of having that uh, long range fire support too. And uh, its ability, the anguish of unredeemed, um, has a chance on a 50-50 chance of enemy units suffering D3 mortal wounds. And it's got the blaze of agony in terms of turning those heavy bolters into assault three weapons. So there are more reasons to pick the mortifiers than 
uh, these penitent engines um you know even though you're just saving a little bit of points cost i think the benefits far outweigh the negatives to get to use your to use them as mortifiers as i said better movement speed better weapon skill and ballistic skill uh, better abilities as such and you can have more in a unit there's nothing stopping you from calling this one a mortifier you know if i was against you i'm sure you wouldn't have any issues uh, me calling this a mortifier that's the end of my review what do you guys think of the model and the rules um are you in line with my views in terms of uh whether you believe the mortifiers are a better choice on the battlefield please do put it in the comments below it'd be great to hear your thoughts and opinions on this model tomorrow we will have the final review of the army set in the form of the seraphim squad so i hope you enjoy that and next week we'll have the review of the army set itself in its totality including the dice and all the rest of it so i hope you enjoy those uh, future videos and there's more to come of the sisters of battle units so stay tuned to the channel for them uh, throughout the course of january and possibly into february as well thank you ever so much for joining me today thank you for watching the emperor protects